The Galaxy Fold 4 has been my phone for a few months now, and it's pretty great. It's better than you would think it would be, and on top of that, it's unbelievable when it comes to doing things such as reading emails, replying to texts, having a giant screen to blow up images with, basically like having an iPad pocketable right in your pocket at all times, ready to go. Multitasking is amazing on this device, but with all that said, there is still a downside and there's reasons why you don't see everybody rocking a folding phone quite yet. Before we talk about that though, let's jump straight into specs about the Fold 4. Just a quick rundown here. So we have an IPX8 water resistance, we have a 4400 milliamp hour battery, and on top of that we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with 12 gigabytes of RAM, a base 256 gigabytes of storage, upgradable to a terabyte. On this device we have a metric shitload of cameras, starting with the cover screen, we have a 10 megapixel camera, then on the rear we have a definite gauge cluster of cameras, and starting from the top it's a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Then beneath that, you have your main camera, your wide angle, that is 50 megapixels. And just beneath that is your 3X telephoto 10 megapixel camera. Then on the inner display, we have a beneath the display camera, but what I would also describe as the potato cam. It is four megapixels and just beneath a wide angle, not quite a wide angle. And it's, it's pretty much a gimmick. I, I don't see any use case for this. It's pointless. It looks bad. Maybe if you really have to, but it's pretty pointless, but it's there if you need it. So now let's talk about the part of the phone you interact with, and that is your displays. So starting with the cover screen, we have a 6.2 inch, 402 PPI at 120 Hertz display. And for the main attraction, we have a 7.6 inch AMOLED, 374 PPI, HDR 10 plus 120 Hertz display, and it looks fantastic. So let's talk a little more about the displays here. So on this cover display, the main screen you interact with quite a bit on this device. It does have what I would call, not a design flaw necessarily, but just something you'll notice when using folding phones. As somebody who doesn't use a case on their device, one of the things I've noticed almost immediately on this phone is when you have it open and you go and you set it down on a table, well, this cover to screen is rubbing all over the place on the table, getting scratched up and you basically need a screen protector. I don't have one here, so I'm a bad example, but it is something I would recommend. On that same note, another thing that's not quite great about the screen is it's just to the point where it's not quite wide enough where it's easy to type on. It's actually kind of difficult to use for typing. I'm still not quite used to it, even after having this phone for quite a while. But that said, other than that, there's not much to complain about about this cover screen. It's not the main display. It's not something you're gonna use all the time anyways. But those are just some things you should note and be aware of if you do buy a folding phone. On the bright side, one of the things that this does great is it's great in the sunlight. Both screens are about a thousand nits peak brightness and they're clear as day to see. Especially in the sunlight, no problem seeing them. Great use for that. Just so you do know is when you are using it in those environments, it does tend to wash out the colors of the display a little bit. So while it's not as great for watching content in the direct sunlight, most people I don't think are doing that anyways. Onto the main attraction of this device, this inner gigantic display here is also fantastic. It's definitely better than the outer display. It's not as soft or as plasticky feeling as I thought it was gonna be. It does feel like glass. It also does feel like it's not quite as durable as glass as the outer display has showed you. It is not durable and the inner display is less. With that said, the crease on this device, you don't actually swipe over the middle of a phone that much, especially a bigger display like this. So you don't notice it as much as you think you would, but it is something that you do feel sometimes you get used to it over time though. It is not a deal breaker for this device. Now the camera under this display, well, it is noticeable if you're looking for it. While using it, playing, doing daily things, it disappears pretty quickly to the eye. Now, if you look for it again, you will see it, but it's not as noticeable as you would think it would be. It actually hides itself fairly well. Now it doesn't look like the rest of the display, but it's pretty close. So what makes this display so great for what it, I use it for? Now, when you're using it, it's awesome being able to open up multiple apps at a time, fill the whole screen, and just, it's there. It's easy to split screen, no problem. The split screen that's built into this and the taskbar at the bottom makes it super easy to use, multitask super quickly, and just kind of get moving. 
Now, with that said, at the same time, it's great for multitasking. It's great for flying drones, reading emails, books, websites, all that stuff's awesome. Having a big display pretty clearly would be great for that stuff. Where it does fall short is the apps that aren't optimized for it really aren't optimized for it. Even some of the apps that are aren't that great. YouTube, for instance, when you open it up, because this phone is more of a square than it is a rectangle, most of this inner display doesn't even get taken up by the video that you're watching. You still end up with pretty large black bars and what I would say is pretty close to if you were to buy like the ultra version of a phone or the biggest version of a phone, the display ends up being about that size for watching content anyways. Then there's other things. Certain apps straight up don't seem to support it at all. And if they do, they stretch kind of weird or you can just tell things haven't been optimized for the device. Something that would make like a pixel fold coming soon, hopefully, hopefully coming soon. That kind of device that Google would be making would hopefully drive more developers to optimize things for a device like this. At least one can hope. Again, though, the things that do to support the device, browsing the web, texting, you know, reading emails, editing documents, playing games, all that stuff works great. And that stuff is super fun. And that's what makes a display like this worth having in your pocket at all times. It's even great some of the widgets. I have my calendar widget and it's just gigantic. I can have a whole month on there and see like three or four events on each day. Flying drones, as I've said, nice that I can blow up the image. And then on top of that, while the image is full screen on the black bars that are there, it puts the information like your settings, flight, all that, that stuff can just take up the black bar. Still doesn't have to cover my image at all. So it makes it easy to see what I'm doing at all times. When it comes to watching content too, this device is awesome for that. Like I said, it won't take up the whole screen, but the actual color, the sound out of this device is awesome. The speakers are super loud. Some of the better speakers I've heard on a phone just looks great. It's a great looking display, shows really nice, and it's fun to watch things on this phone. What about the hinge on this phone? One of the things I've noticed right away is dirt does get in there sometimes, and you can hear it crunching and grinding in there, and it is one of the scariest sounds. One of the other things I've noticed, pretty sturdy. When it comes to opening it, it does take quite a bit of force. If you had lotion on your hands, good luck opening this without stabbing the inner display. One of the things I've learned is I do baby this phone a little extra, especially when it's open. I take extra care to make sure nothing does anything to the inner display. And when opening it, sometimes I feel like I need to be extra careful so my thumb doesn't like pry in there and scrape the screen, which is a good and bad thing. It means the device won't open in my pocket, which is great. And I'm also scared to open it and stab the screen with my finger, so not great. One of the other things that's kind of lacking in this phone is battery. Now, I originally got this device and I would let it charge to 100%, and that would get me through about three quarters of a day, which doesn't sound too bad other than I would expect a normal phone to get me through about a day. I do tend to be a pretty power user of a device. So what I've started doing is just letting it charge to 85%, knowing I'm gonna have to charge it anyways. Might as well protect the battery as long as I can. Battery life is a sore spot. And as you would expect, the cameras on this are fantastic. Samsung makes great cameras. They do awesome. My only note with the cameras, other than that inner potato cam, would be that the 3X would be nice if it was closer to a 5 or 10X. Yeah, you can go and zoom in like 30X digitally, but I found that other than for reading like super far distant signs, the quality once you zoom in digitally that far is just so far gone, it's not usable. So I would prefer to have just a farther zoom to begin with and not have to even think about that which maybe is something we'll see in you know, newer devices with these telescopic cameras. So with all that said, why, why is this not out there for everybody? Why is not everybody buying it? Price for one is something. It's 1800 bucks, but I don't think that's the biggest drawback of this device. I still think while most of these parts are just as good as a normal phone, the parts that aren't make it so that just not everybody can have one. Maybe not everyone doesn't even want one with how thick they are, with how weird of a device that is, but the kind of people I could see using this device more regularly than a normal person just won't go for a device like this. If you are working on a job site and you need to pull up plans all the time, you need to pull up images of things, having an iPad in your pocket at all times would be great. You don't have to carry another device around with you. You don't need an iPad and your phone. You don't have to worry about getting internet for the iPad. You know, there's a lot of things you'd have to figure out with that. But without being able to, you know, trust this device with dirt, can't bring it out there with you. It's too big of a risk to get dirt in the hinge, ruin the device entirely. And just, it's just not quite ready from that standpoint. I could see where in three to five years, as this device gets more and more 
robust as they get better at blocking out dirt and water. I mean, water's IPX8. They're gonna block out water just fine right now. It's dirt that's the big problem here. On top of this inner display. This inner display, I definitely baby it. And it just needs to get up to the standard of normal glass before it'll be fine. And once it's to that point, I don't see why most people wouldn't get a device like this. I'm sure by then they'll be getting thinner. Already rumors this year show the Galaxy Fold 5 completely closed, no gap here, which is also a great thing to see coming. We're just waiting on it. And it's not like it's too far off. The cases, there's no good cases for a device like this anyways. And I don't use one to start, but if there's no good cases, then it's even more fragile to the people that do want to put a case on it. Like I said, three to five years, I think we'll get there. Apple spends about 501 bucks to make the iPhone Pro Max. Those retail for 1200 for the 256 gig model. The same storage model of this device costs Samsung 670 bucks and retails for 1800. So the profit margin there is way higher. Now, Samsung does have to warranty these and stuff like that too, so they do need a bigger gap. But it also shows that Samsung's hopefully taking that extra money they're making on a device like this and putting that back into research and development to make these stronger, to make these thinner, make them more, make the cameras better, make the under display cameras better. And that's all just gonna take time. So while we're waiting for that, hopefully it keeps getting better. Hopefully Samsung keeps working on that. And in the meantime, if you're an enthusiast and you don't go to the beach and you don't work in a job site, these things are awesome. You won't regret picking one up, but if you're just about anyone else or you're just a little too skeptical of how fragile these devices can be, then I'd wait for now. I'd wait a few more years and see, check back in, see if they're sturdy, or maybe even this year, maybe Samsung will surprise us with the Galaxy Fold 5. With all that said, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.